Selena Hey! Hey, girl! Hi, I'm so happy to have you on the show. I'm so happy to be on the show, because you're killing it, girl. Thank you so much. Gotten to talk to so many cool people and get so many, like, tips and just advice. And I think the common thread here is that everyone's process, like, during pain and fear and anxiety is, like, really unique and really different. Right. Um, and so everyone's ideas and, and how they kind of cope are so unique. So I'm excited to hear yours. Yeah, I got I got a lot out of the people that you were talking to because it's just nice to hear what other people are doing. And a little bit of what you said, it's it's connecting to people. You know, when I saw what you were doing, you know, I've I mean, I've always always been a fan of yours. I think you're one of the greatest singers ever. Um and so I just, I was so happy that I even got this opportunity to talk to you about some of the most, um, uh, some of the most incredible people, but also just what's going on. So yeah, what do you want to, what do you want to know? <laughs> oh, great. Okay. So what I kind of wanted to start was, um, I'm just really happy that you, we did this through DM and it was very sweet because you just sent a butterfly emoji and that's enough. Like connecting with people and letting them know that you're there a yeah. butterfly emoji is totally enough so you know what advice would you give for someone that wants to reconnect with the person they haven't you know been connected with in a while and they feel like it's just a really good time to let people know that you care and people know that they're appreciated and so would you go for the little things do you think writing down what you want to say in case they call you so you're ready like what's your yeah. well um, I've been writing a, a lot. I think that that's been help, helping me process what's been going on. Um, and, you know, I, I, had, I had gone to treatment a few times for anxiety and for depression and for other stuff that I'd been struggling with. And, you know, when I do meetings and stuff, a lot of it is, is connecting with people that maybe you haven't been the greatest to or that you may not have thought about. So, I, I feel like there's been a lot of people I've gotten to do that with, not necessarily saying it was bad, but just, you know, saying, hey, I just, I hope you're safe. Like, I hope you're doing okay. And, and that you know that on my side, I'm only sending you love. And I just want, want them to know that I see them. Yes. Um, and so I think that that's, that's kind of something I've been doing, but I've missed my family. You know, it's still really hard. I, I definitely just try to use the tools I've used when I've been in therapy, which is amazing. Um, so and di literally, uh, dialectical behavior therapy. I'm not sure if you've heard of that, but that's one thing that helps big times or big time. Um, and it's basically a book on how you process your emotions and why the actions go into, you know, what your thoughts turn into action. It's kind of like what you were talking about with ants and yeah. how they completely just, and I visualize things so much. So it freaks me out. So I feel like there are moments where I just have to center myself and let the thoughts come in. Sometimes I'll write them down and then completely just like sit with what is it? What is the root of this? Why can't I get to the bottom of this? And it really helps me. And I was talking to Carrie about this, and I think probably, you know, whether it's us on a set or whether it's people watching that are in school or workplaces, we're so used to being connected in some way. And when that is like just kind of, it was just so abrupt, it just all of a sudden we were locked down. And yeah. there wasn't much time to, usually there is a process, I feel like. And usually, you know, by being gentle with ourselves, you start making those little habits to create big changes. Mm -hmm. And this wasn't a time where we had any warning to start kind of baby stepping ourselves to disconnect, you know, yeah. or stop relying on people. It felt very like immediate. And so I think that's probably where some of my anxiety came in was just that I didn't really have time for my preparation. And I'm someone that, you know, from being I just, I just like to prepare. I like yeah, to be prepared. And that's a sense of control and safety and not having that can be really terrifying. Yeah. And I think that's kind of, um, when I saw everything happening, I think, um, 
Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I think it's just really hard because I have grandparents and um, seeing people not take it as seriously as they should is um, really hard for me because I know there are people like the, the hospitals and everybody that are um, literally sacrificing their lives. And, um, you know, one of the donations that I've made are to hospitals and one of them is to Cedar sinai because that's the hospital where I found out I had lupus, where I found out, well, I needed my kidney transplant. So I'm giving like a portion of all certain things like from my merch because it doesn't seem important, but just to give to them. Um, and my biggest thing is like learning how to be okay being inside and maybe taking walks and stuff and, um, and, and watching things like this, you know, watching yeah. things that encourage me and that hearing other people feeling the same way. So, I think yeah. It's really, it's really scary because I think in the beginning of this, we were all kind of under the impression that this was something that was attacking the older people. And, yeah. and so that really scared me for like, even my mom, like, so my mom visits my grandma every day. She does senior living and senior living, someone comes and delivers her her medicine, her food. Yeah. And, you know, there's just a lot of people. And so I didn't want to freak out my grandma. So I called her and I tried to explain. She doesn't watch anything but forensic files and like really weird stuff. So yeah. she watches the same episode. She always tells you before it happens what's going to happen because she's seen every episode a hundred times. She's like a total insomniac. She stays up and she like literally remembers. She like talks along with what's happening on TV. It's nuts. But I um, called her like, obviously you're not going to watch the news because it's not on one of the repeats. And I didn't want to freak her out, but I wanted her to make sure she was protecting herself. And so that really scared me just because I had to, at one point now kind of like parent my grandparent, which felt really strange. Yeah. But then my mom also has such a hard time stopping because she's had five kids and we, she's so used to going. The fact that we were kind of dangerous and could jeopardize her health made it where we couldn't see my mom because she sees her mom. And so that really gave my mom anxiety because she isn't, I haven't seen her in probably three weeks and that never happens. So mm -hmm. it's just interesting now because we're starting to see that this isn't something that's just attacking immune compromise or yeah. older people, but the kids that are in really great health are finding yeah. themselves in the ICU. Yeah. Um, and so we're just learning new things every single day. And mm -hmm. I think that's why we have to be so gentle is because we need to keep ourselves in a, in a soft headspace where this information can come in and we can absorb but it doesn't make us just shut down you know because i think i think there is a lot of good that can come from this experience um, yeah like this and and i think that that's something that's helped me too is like i you know i i read scripture and poetry and everything and it's there's this one line that says like i choose to see the goodness in the land of the lord who well, for me speaking personally and it's because we we weren't really prepared for for this specifically but i yeah. do know that there are moments where this is where we test each other like how are we going to treat each other because even me just walking my dog down the street you know and and people walk by and then you switch sides it's they're saying hi and they're being friendly and they're being kind and and that's something elton said that i hope happens as well as that you know, this can be a time to be gentle with ourselves, like you said, taking breaks from all the noise, even taking breaks from social media for a second and just, you know, being outside or being with my babies outside and like, just, just breathing in air. Um, I think that that's something that's really important. I agree. Um, okay, this is like so deep and I can't lose this, but for some reason our connection is being weird. I'm going to reconnect you for one second. Hold okay. On. Okay. I don't want to lose it. Hold on. Okay. Okay, we're back. That was too good. I couldn't like not see her. I didn't, want, I didn't want to do that. That was like too good. I had to see you. Mm -hmm. um, talking about mental health and self care. I mean, you just kind of gave us some of those tips, but you know, what's something that you can use to filter helpful thoughts versus hurtful thoughts? Cause I know this is a time where the ants just totally want to attack our brain. And yeah. I think 
when things like this are happening, we love to be future telling. We love to be psychics where we know what's going to happen. And we really mm -hmm. don't know anything. And it can just give us anxiety. Um, what do you use to keep yourself helpful? Communicating with like women I respect, you know, like I've, I have a few older women that I look up to that aren't in the industry. They, um, I call them and I think talking through what it is you're feeling is extremely helpful. And, yeah. and I think there's wisdom in, in all of this with women and with other people and, and all of my friends as well will get on calls or, you know, we'll just talk to each other. Um, but sometimes I have to feel it, Riley. Sometimes I gotta cry it out and I've got to release it and just take a deep breath and then remind myself you know, go back to my tools, which is, okay, where is this coming from? Yeah. I understand I'm a big empath, so I feel so much of what the world yeah. is feeling. So maybe I need to take a step back from that or, or, or whatever it is, but also just being, being there for other people actually helps me too. Um, I agree. So, it so much light in this time just to be able to connect with people. Like you said, people I respect and people that I love and want to hear their advice, but just to know people are there and just to know that yeah. people are feeling the same way that I feel makes me feel less alone. Um, yeah. You know, so what's your advice for someone who's afraid to talk about mental health? Like where would you tell people to reach out? I know you work with crisis text line, 741, uh, 741 and I know someone will respond. So is that something that you would say to reach out to or like, how do you talk about mental health? So um, recently I went to uh, one of the best mental hospitals in the world, but definitely in America, McLean's Hospital. And I discussed that after years of going through a lot of different things, I realized that I was bipolar. And so when I go to, when I go to know it, more information, it actually helps me. It doesn't scare me once I know it. And I think people yeah. get scared of that, right? They're like, oh, and I've seen it. And I've seen some of it even in my own family where I'm like, what's going on? Where it's, it's just, I'm from Texas. It's not known to like talk about your mental health or you got to seem cool. And then I see anger built up in children, teenagers or whatever, young adults, because they are wanting that so badly. And so yeah. I just feel like when I, when I finally said what I was going to say, I, I, I wanted to know everything about it. And it took the fear away. It was like when my mom, well, when I was younger, I was scared of thunderstorms. And my mom bought me all these different books on thunderstorms. So she's like, the more that you educate yourself on this, the more that you're not going to be afraid. And it completely worked. And that's kind of something that helps me big time. That's really good advice. I really like that about buying the books about th thunderstorms. Because when you do understand something, you don't think, hey, this is just happening to me. Because when something just happening to you, then you can't kind of find some sense of you know maybe tools that you can right. use and it'll give you a sense of like there's there's things that I can do like therapy that can make me understand parts I was actually talking about parts of my personality that if I let them control me they could become negative but if I learn how to kind of um use them for good like I have you know OCD like I'm pretty obsessive at a time when I was younger it used to really drive me you know kind of made me feel like I was just too different. I didn't really understand it. And mm -hmm. um, I used to like alphabetize things. Like I couldn't, like I would throw these total fits if I couldn't alphabetize things and all these different things. But now it's been able to help me to kind of learn about it and, and be able to use it for good and use it for doing things like this and staying yeah. organized. But then also just be able to understand it more. And so it's just really important to understand um, something that you're relating with or just doing research and it's a, it's a really good tool. Yeah. Um, you know, so what are, what I wanted to ask you were, you know, besides obviously like your therapist, what are some reliable sources that are like really close to you in your life? Um, you know, like crisis text hotline or what are some um, organizations that you support that you would encourage people to look into? So I, um, I recently with along with, we were selling some stuff is that we were donating um, to the Recording Academy. I had Justin Tranter, who is one of my writers that I work with all the time, and I love him so much. Um, 
he sent a mass text to people saying this is definitely going to affect our music community and music makes i mean mu as you know yeah. music makes you feel makes you happy and makes you explore different things and so you know the music cares is like a part of that as well so i've donated to both of them um because that's also a side of my people so i'm doing like you know, I'm trying to do hospitals and then I'm going to be working with music cares and then I'm not going to stop because I feel, you know, when I talk to my team daily, I'm like, where's the, where's the holes here? Where's, where's the things that I can be placed to, to help in any way possible. So, um, yeah, there's, there's a couple of other things, but I love music cares. We actually were talking about music cares and the struggles that independent artists will have with concerts being canceled and venues. And I love what Live Nation is doing with crew and yes. taking care of all the crews. So people are really stepping up in our community, which makes me really, um, really happy and proud to be a part of it. Yes. Um, before we go, I wanted to talk about this tool that I have that's called Feel Great Anywhere, Anytime. And it's from my therapist, Dr. Amen. And it's about anchoring yourself. So in times where like anxiety can kind of make us, oh, it's gonna do it again. I might have to reconnect you. Okay. So pause. Hold on. I'm reconnecting you. Okay. Okay. So this is the one thing I want to ask you. So it's about anchoring yourself. Um, you know, anxiety can really make us kind of feel, you know, that floating feeling where you feel yes. like there's no weight in your feet or your hands. And so you really have to like find the gravity and let it like just anchor you. So Dr. Amen has this trick, feel great anywhere, anytime where you anchor yourself to a memory. So even if you're traveling and you have a suitcase and I was saying that you know, when I see, you know, like in my suitcase, if I had a yellow sweatshirt, it would remind me of bananas. And one time me and my brother decided we didn't like the way that my parents were running the house. So we were going to live inside our dollhouse, my dollhouse that I had outside. <laughs> but we only took bananas. And by like the second hour, we were so over the bananas that we were like sneaking over to our grandma's house and getting like all her little sweet treats and Chex Mix and all these things. So it reminds me of, the yellow reminds me of bananas, which reminds me of my brother. And then it reminds me of my childhood and how fortunate I was to have a playmate because some people don't have brothers and sisters that you can play with. And so I was just so lucky to have that. So that anchors me. What's like a memory in your life or something around you that reminds you? Or what's a memory in your life that you like to think about in times where you feel that floaty feeling? It's a really beautiful memory. It, yeah, wow. Um, probably when my sister was born, um, because I was an only child growing up, so I didn't have my sister six. So big, big age difference. But when, when she came into my life, I remember having the chest to chest moment. Yeah. And so when I think of that moment, you know, and, and it's working, <laughs> it's working yeah, right it's now, working. um, where I, I just, that nothing else mattered in that time and this beautiful life just came in and I, I just was overwhelmed. And I think what makes me think of that is like baby smell, yeah. <laughs> you know, like yeah. something that's really, really sweet. And it just, it brings me back to life, you know, yeah. it's, it's, it's a life and it's, and it's a part of me in a weird way. So I so feel your like sister, your little sister is six. Yeah. Okay, so my little sister just turned 20. It'll change. It will change. Right now, I go between being, like, the coolest person in the world in her life to, like, she doesn't know me. Yeah, right. So that'll right. happen. She won't know you at a period of her life. Someone's going to say, like, oh, your sister Selena's cool. And she goes, who's that? I don't know her. Exactly. Oh, no. You're oh, so yeah, right. She'll not know you for a couple of years. That's what happens every now and then. They're like, you know, I'll run into now. No 